This is John Cole at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to test a Slow Star that came back to me as a defective unit because a customer said that it basically clogs up, jams up. They got to stop multiple times to clean the machine out while they're juicing. In addition, the pulp came out wet. And then finally, the other main complaint was that there's a lot of buildup underneath the auger and that the juicer is a little bit heavy. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, this is a serious juicer made in South Korea, has a full 10 year warranty. And the most important thing for me as the owner of DiscountJuicers.com and the guy that makes all these videos is that you get the right juicer for you. That's the most important thing. I don't really care what brand you get. You could get a Slow Star, you could get a Nama JT, you get a Santa 727, you could get a Dynapro and juice in the bag, vacuum juice in the bag like I show. I don't really care which brand you get because I sell all the major brands. The thing that's most important to me is that actually number one, you're gonna use the juicer and number two, you fully understand how the juicer is used and how you need to use the juicer once you get it so you have the best experience. And how could you do that? Well, number one, you could watch my videos. I have over 700 videos on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all different major brand juicers to show you guys the exact results you're going to get and more importantly how to use the machines if you guys are considering a slow star for example go on my youtube channel page and then click the magnifying glass and then type in slow star so you can see all the videos i've ever made with the slow star juicer go through them one by one and watch the video to see me juicing it so you can learn more about the process i also share a lot of intimate details about every juicer uh, so that you can learn what it's good at and what it may not be so good at. I really like the Slow Star and I get compliments on it all the time. I mean, I was just talking to one of my customers from Texas, he's like, John, man, I used to have the VSJ, but once I got the Slow Star, man, it changed the game. That thing never stops on carrots. It's so durable. It just runs and it's just so great. And it could be a great juicer if you use it appropriately and properly. And more importantly, it is matched to your specific needs. That's one of the things I'm not a really big fan of a lot of influence out there is they're all always say, buy this juicer, it's the best. I'm going to say for some people, this may be the best one for you, but for others, it may not be the best one for you. How will you know this? Not by listening to one influencer saying this one is always the best, but by watching my videos and understanding how the different juicers work and the pros and cons of each one so that you could make the best decision for you. And I empower you guys with the information you need so that you could, you know, make your own decisions. Now, I know some of you guys still might get confused after watching all my videos. John, you got 700 videos, man. I've watched 699 of them, and I still don't know what juice to buy. That's all right. If you live in my service area, which is the United States, please contact me. Link is down below in the description to fill out a, a web form. Contact me personally with your specific situation. I will get to learn more about what you want to juice, the features that are important to you, and then I could share with you my recommendations, or maybe the, first, the top two recommendations that I think might be a good fit. Sometimes there's a clean cut you know, recommendation. I'll say, buy this juicer, based on what you're telling me, that's the one that's gonna do the best job. And then just go with it, right? That being said, every juicer is like a potential boyfriend or girlfriend that you may have gone out with, or maybe even still are going out with your husband or your wife, right? A juicer's a juicer, right? If you treat the juicer well, it's going to treat you well. If you treat your husband or wife well, they're going to treat you well. If you're the biggest witch to them with a B, <laughs> then they're not going to they're going to be maybe not the nicest person to you. The same thing with the juicer. Some juicers, I will say, are more high maintenance than others. Like some girlfriends or husbands are more high maintenance. You got to treat the juicer right and the and the vertical juicers that you have to hand manually feed in the produce um, like pre-cutting it ordering it properly and I have videos showing all this in every video I use the slow star I show you guys the exact procedures the problem arises when you just start taking food and just shoving it in there using the pusher which I do not advocate and then the machine could go awry because you once again you're not treating it properly so it's so important to me that you treat the juicer properly if you don't want to pre-cut things like I'm going to show you guys in this video then get a different juicer get a Nama J2 that has the automatic pre-cutting blade so that you don't have to pre-cut the produce or feed it in. It's a game changer juicer. The other juicer you could get if you want to not have to pre-cut fibrous greens, celery, even ginger 
is the Santa 727, right? That you just put the produce in. Once again, every juicer has its pros and cons. I was quite surprised when the customer said she's having problems with the slow star because I rarely have customers have problems because I know most of my customers are good customers. They've watched my videos and they know how to use, properly use the machine. Uh, it is our best selling manual feed vertical auger juicer at this time. We sell actually, we outsell this more than the VSJ because the VSJ actually costs more money and this offers greater flexibility than the VSJ does. That being said, the NAMA J2 is outselling even the almighty oh slow star at this point. So, uh, so that concerned me, so I got the machine back and now I'm gonna try it for you guys, show you guys, the, show you guys if it's defective or not, or maybe if it's maybe um, you know something else, maybe not preparing the produce properly or what, because I'm just gonna use it like I would use it. If it blows up, <laughs> then it blows up or it doesn't work, and then I know the machine's defective. But more than likely, in situations like this, I have found that the customer is simply not doing the right procedures to make it work properly. And that's why I make these videos for you guys so you guys can see the procedures that you have to do to make the juicer work. And if you don't like the procedures that I'm showing you guys, right, don't buy this juicer. That's as simple as that, all right? So we got the Slow Star SW2020, the silver and black version matches the Raiders. I like the Slow Star because we can just basically put a nice tall 32 ounce mason jar right underneath the spout to catch all the juice as it comes out. And we got the catch cup for all the pulp. Now what we'll be juicing today, we got a whole bunch of organic carrots here. I got two organic apples and some organic ginger. I encourage you guys to eat ginger, it's highly anti-inflammatory. And of course, in every recipe that I like to juice, I try to juice some leafy green vegetables. So these are leaves, these are actually cauliflower leaves out of my garden, and they are huge. Um, it's very good to juice the stalks of your leafy greens. I know some of you guys might not eat those because they're too fibrous, but they're perfect to juice. They actually contain higher mineral content than the leaves alone, although the leaves alone have a lot more phytonutrients in there, so it's best to juice it all. So we can't just shove this in the machine, it may give us some problems. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly juice in the slow start. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first step is turn the machine on and we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting up the apple. You wanna put in some soft things in first, like the apple, let's see if it jams up. The next thing you wanna pre-cut your greens. So we're gonna go ahead and take the greens and I like to basically just break them in half once, break them in half twice, and then I'll take the knife and I'll just slice them up and I try to do like quarter inch slices. You could do half inch, uh, quarter inch always is gonna work best, right? Then take a handful of these pre-cut greens drop it right into the machine, right? Follow that with a carrot to kind of use as a pusher to drop it in. You'll hear chunk off some. You can pull that carrot back up. You can now go ahead and then put in another apple and put in some more of these greens that we got. And now we're just gonna use the rest of this carrot to push this in. Very important, you wanna let the machine accept things in at its pace. If you start trying to push things in faster than, it can, than it's working, that could cause issues when you're juicing, all right? Next, we got the, the ginger. So the ginger, we got a one inch piece. This is very potent. Don't put a lot of ginger in, so I'm only using one inch. But it's very important to slice the ginger up in the slices, because the ginger has strings in it that can block up the juicer. Likewise, if you're juicing things like celery, uh, you know, you should also be pre-cutting your celery just as I'm pre-cutting the greens. I already have videos on how to use this machine with all these different produce items linked down below to how to properly use a vertical single auger juicer. All right, so that's running. We're continuing to cut. Let's see, let's go ahead and put in a handful of the greens next. Always important after you put in some greens in the machine, follow it with a carrot, right? It'd be terrible to put like all the carrots and then all the apples and then all the greens. You wanna rotate the different textures that will allow the juicer to work much more effectively and efficiently. All right, put some apple in there. Let's go ahead and put some small piece of ginger. Once again, a lot more of those leafy greens. And then we're gonna go ahead and follow it with a carrot. We're just gonna push, have a carrot kind of push down those greens uh, to get it to juice. As you guys can see, uh, the pulp is coming out free flowing. Um, and that's really good, and the juice is coming out. So I mean, to me, this looks like it's totally working perfectly. There's nothing wrong with this machine other than maybe the person didn't like like it, or they didn't maybe use it properly, all right? Once again, got more leaves. I just break them in half once. 
break them in half twice, and then we're just gonna go ahead down the line and just slice them up simply and easily. All right, we almost got a quarter cup of juice so far. Let's go ahead and put another apple in there. Put some more greens in there. And then follow that with a carrot. Looks like this is working pretty uneventfully. So what I wanna do for you guys is we're just gonna go ahead and save you guys some time. We're gonna speed this video up and we're gonna come back at you when I'm all done juicing. We're just about done juicing. We got the last, uh, one of the last carrots going in. We're once again letting the machine run at its own pace, not trying to cram stuff down in there too fast. Pick up the last of these greens, drop them right in there. And of course, you always want to try to end with a root vegetable last. In this case, we got three carrots left, so that's a good thing. Drop that carrot in there and let the carrot push itself in automatically at its own speed. This machine has worked flawlessly. It actually looks like we're going to overflow our juice here in a second. So let me go ahead and uh, get another cup here. <laughs> All right, one last carrot going in the machine. This has worked really well without any incident. Now the most important thing is when you are done juicing, make sure you let the machine run for a little bit longer before you turn it off because there are still produce that is processing inside the blade. Things are not processed instantly. There may be a delay of 30 seconds, even a minute after you put that last produce in until it's done juicing. How you will know when it's done juicing is that the pulp will stop flowing out of this little pulp port and the juice will stop dripping out. To me, I still see the pulp moving and the juice is still dripping out, so we're gonna just let it run a little bit longer. One of the techniques I like to do sometimes is turn it off and then you can go ahead and hit reverse a little bit and then turn it back on the forward position that might kind of help get some uh, loose produce in at the top that actually did not run through the juicer uh, to run through and enhance your yield just a tiny bit. All right, so it looks like, wow, there's still some pulp movement, so we're just gonna go ahead and let this run, and we're gonna... All right, so finally the pulp has stopped moving. We're gonna go ahead now and turn this machine off. One of the tips I like to tell you guys is to basically tip the machine up to get any kind of that juice that's still in this little um, drum area to uh, drip out. We can then close the spout cap. We've got a nice um, bin of pulp there. Next, let's go ahead and take the machine apart to show you guys actually what you're gonna have to clean and what it looks like inside the machine. So we're gonna turn this part off and on the top part, you know, there's very little things you're gonna have to clean. The next piece coming out is the main auger. And on the auger, you can see there's some extra, you know, pulp that did not get ground up. That's completely normal. And if we flip the auger over underneath, you can see there's some buildup on the bottom of the auger. This is completely normal, and this is part of the design of the juicer. Um, so don't be alarmed when there's pulp underneath the auger. It's totally designed to do that. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to point out is that once you're done juicing carrots, if you notice like your auger has like a green tinge or green sheen to it, this happens on all black augers, that's all right. That's part of the carotenoids that are basically coating the black color. So now when you look at it, it kind of looks greenish. Don't worry, this is not abnormal. This is totally normal. And if you wash this with soap and water, you could remove that uh, tinge uh, to it. But if you just use water alone, you're gonna, it's gonna stay on there, all right? That's one of the tips. Next, we got the uh, juicing screen and the wiping blade coming out. And as you guys can see, there's a little bit of pulp still left inside there as well. And then finally we got this bottom piece. You can see there's some pulp in the bottom and the pulp is flowing out here. Now one of the complaints was the pulp is wet when it comes out. Wet pulp is such a subjective subject because to me, you know, this may be fairly dry, but to you, it may be fairly wet. You know, if I take this and squeeze it, I mean, I can squeeze uh, two, five, maybe five, six drips out of it. It's fairly dry. You know, and unless you're using a pure juicer that costs $2,500, you know, every slow juicer will leave your pulp with some moisture in it. How moist depends on the juicer you're using, the extraction method. If the juicer tends to be more efficient, like the Santa 727, your pulp will be drier. 
more importantly, it depends on what you're juicing specifically. You know, if you're juicing things like cucumbers and apples, the pulp will be more wet than if you're juicing something like celery or leafy greens, in which case, using a slow juicer, the pulp will be more dry. That's why I do all the videos for you guys to show you guys actual yield comparison testing so you guys can see the results. In addition, I also have videos to show you guys how to get more juice out of your pulp if you want it, right? Other things, she said also the yields were low and the pulp is coming out wet. Now the pulp can come out wet if you did not put this little tab in the bottom. There's a little tab on the slow star, it's actually a red tab. This red tab is a silicone um, little um, plug that you put in so it keeps back pressure on the pulp. If you forget to put this plug in, the pulp will free flow out and the pulp will be wetter and you'll be sacrificing some yield. So it's always important to make sure you properly assemble the juicer before you use it. So to me, this juicer looks like it's totally operating properly. I didn't have any issues juicing in it. More importantly, let's go ahead and taste the juice to make sure it passed my taste test. Mm -mm. It's a good solid juice. Now I will say, the Slow Star does put high levels of pulp into the juice. And I have shown this in other videos when I use a sieve test, but the Slow Star also comes with a sieve, so you can remove the pulp that would be put in the juice if it is not desired. So to sum this video up, in my opinion, this juicer is operating properly, and I'm not in people's homes when they use the juicer or to see what they're doing with it, because if I was there, I'd be able to give them hands-on <laughs> coaching and showing them how to properly use the machine and how to get the best results. I can't be everywhere in the world or even in the country, so that's why I make these videos for you guys where I explain and show how to use the machine so that you guys can get the best results once you buy your juicer at Discount Juicers. This is something that no other company on the planet will do for you guys is make videos to help you guys out, to show you guys the exact procedures, how to troubleshoot problems you may have with the juicer, and that's what you're gonna get when you purchase from Discount Juicers. You're gonna get me on your side to ensure, number one, you buy the right juicer the first time, to consult with you if you need extra assistance to get the right juicer. You're also gonna get me on your side to answer your questions uh, before and after the sale. And in addition, more importantly, you're gonna get me on your side to make sure that the manufacturers take care of you if you should have warranty claims. So I appreciate you guys that support me by making your juicer purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to make these videos and to educate the world about the power of juicers, but more importantly, show all the different brands so that you guys could get the right one for you and you could be a juicer for life. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to share this video with somebody else. That helps out the YouTube algorithm to get this video out to more people. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. Make sure to click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. That's about every five to seven days. And also, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 700 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all the different major brand juicers and other appliances that allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables so that you guys can get healthier. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.